Okay, this is going to be just a bit of a strange video, but I saw an infomercial last night. There's this pan here made by Gotham Steel. I bought this one on Amazon. It was $4 more than their infomercial, but there was no shipping because it was Amazon Prime. So uh, this is Robert Andrews from www.grandpacooks.com. So we have, um, we're going to cook breakfast. This is a real-time video. I will post the actual timelines on the comments down below the video so you don't have to wait for my oven to heat up or anything. But what we have, this is just a regular flat top oven or range. Going to put the pan on there and I'm going to cook bacon. I have some bacon here. Just regular thick cut bacon. After that, I have some hash browns so that you didn't have to um, watch me grate them. I, they're just processed in a food processor here. So we're going to cook those and we're going to top that with two fried eggs afterwards. So um, if this works, I'm going to keep the pan. If it doesn't, I'm going to return it to Amazon Prime as um, does not do what the manufacturer claims that it does. So let's get cooking. So first thing, let's turn the oven on about seven and that's going to preheat it. Now, the pan has been washed according to instructions. And it also says do not exceed 500 degrees in the oven. It doesn't say anything about the range top. But generally speaking, you don't want to exceed 400 degrees with anything other than just a steel or cast iron stovetop baking pan. Anything that has a nonstick surface on, never, never exceed 400 degrees. Because number one, you will ingest those... Um, anti-Teflon chemicals, whatever they are. Um, and number two, more importantly, you'll ruin your pan. Well, ingesting is kind of important, but um, this too will pass, we'll say. So anyway, our pan is heating up. I am going to, I keep my pans up top here. So we have a nice big pan. We're going to get our bacon into the skillet. And uh, then we're going to use the residual bacon grease just for flavor. The instructions say no oil is necessary on these pans. So I'm not going to put any, even for the eggs. So let's just put this right here so you can still kind of see what's going on here. So I have my bacon. This is the tail end of this bacon. It's getting a little gamey, um, but I still use it as long as it's not too bad because it is going to be heated to a very, very hot temperature. Now, I like just for ease of cooking to break this down to cut it into three pieces. Okay, we're already getting a sizzle here. That's good. It's going to be interesting to see how this thing browns. The problem with nonstick cooking surfaces is they frequently don't brown as well as cast iron or steel. I got too much bacon. What's well, okay? Let's crowd the pan and see what happens. Thought there were only three strips of bacon here. It turns out there were four.
Always remember to wash in between. I like to keep my meat in one of these little shoe boxes. I have one labeled meat, one labeled cheese, to use a lot of both of those. Now in my shredder, you'll notice that I get these pieces that don't shred up. I just cut those with a knife and mix it in. Now again it says that no oil is necessary. But I am going to use oil in my potatoes when I toss them with salt. And that's mainly just to get the salt to stick. Not too much oil though. We want to keep this experiment true. So I don't like the crowding, so I am going to remove some of these pieces. And then we'll get back and we'll cook those later. Where is it? Ah, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So what I wanted to show you is this. Let me give you a close up. This is an infrared thermogun by Thermoworks.com. What I like about it is it gives you a readout of your temperature. So right now we're looking at 245, 230, 264. Um, about, we're still right about 300 degrees with our bacon. And what I like to use for my bacon where it drying is get a piece of junk mail And let your bacon <clears throat> let your bacon drain right here on the junk mail covered with a paper towel to keep it sterile. Clean, maybe not sterile, but you know what I mean. Put some of this bacon back in here. And we're up to about 313, so I'm going to turn my heat down to 4. Lock the bacon a little bit. Okay, so I have salt, 
I like to use medicine containers for my salt just because it has a nice top that's not going to come off. Little EVOO poured not on the potatoes but around the rim. And now I'm going to toss the potatoes. Now ideally these would be going in about now, but we have a couple extra strips of bacon that are still cooking. The pan's performing really well at this point, and there are no scorching on the bottom of the pan. Come on, break apart, you guys. There we go. Well, I like to use little cups for my eggs. That prevents shells getting in them. I'm going to be cooking two large eggs, sunny side up. Well, actually not sunny side up, over easy. We're going to test the flipping ability of this pan. Always crack an egg on a flat surface. When I was young I cracked on a corner. The problem with that is that you end up frequently with eggshells in your eggs. Uh, if not eggshells, at least the contaminants that were on the outside of the eggshell get put into your eggs. Now if you're if you're cooking scrambled eggs or something where the egg is cooked completely, that's not a problem. You know, the contaminants will heat up, it'll kill off the bad guys. But especially if you're doing over easy, you don't want to uh, get any contaminants. Uh, from the outside in, because that is what will cause salmonella. Okay, let's take a temperature reading. We are at 423, so we're going to remove this from the heat. That's too hot. Um, actually, you know what? Let's put it back on, get a nice initial sear on these hash browns. I should have dumped some of that oil. it easier for grandma to clean up. Okay, I'm not real happy that I forgot to dump the bacon grease out. But, you know, I can only juggle so many things at one time. After all, I'm a grandpa. You get older, things start slipping. Now, I did cut bacon with my shears, so I suggest that you getting some shears that will come apart so you can properly clean them. I wonder if we can get some of that out. i do a little experiment here, egg experiment. Tip this up. <coughs> Let's see if we can absorb some of that oil. Oil is hot, 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 so be careful. Okay, we actually got quite a bit of it out. Good. Okay, so these are going to cook just until they start to brown around the edges. Oh. Sorry about that. Hi, these are going to cook just until it starts to brown around the edges. 
Then we're going to flip them. There are different ways to flip. I personally am a full body flipper, uh, which means I put my whole body into it, but um, we'll try to minimize that for your viewing pleasure. So, seeming like the heat, because the potatoes are spreading around, have so much contact with the bottom, it is reducing the temperature. Now your hash browns you would like to cook at about 350 to 400 degrees. 450 if you're in cast iron or steel. And um, <clears throat> so I turned the heat up a bit. And we're going to wait for these to brown. Again, I have my eggs here. Those are going to cook in no time at all. Sample one of the bacons. An inexpensive bacon, but that'll work. So, <clears throat> so if you're in a relationship where one of you likes to cook and the other uh, doesn't mind cleaning up. Um, that's what we have here. I I like to cook, but cook, cleaning up seems to take me forever. So I cook. Um, I don't like cleaning up. Grandma doesn't like cooking. She doesn't mind cleaning up. So we have a good arrangement. However, you see that um, I rinse as I go. It just makes her job easier. Okay, let's try to flip this. That's good. So what we have here, we have a nice crust going on the eggs. Or eggs, <laughs> on the hash browns. So those are going to cook for a little bit more. So we're about five minutes from eating. Grapefruit juice, or cut grapefruit already on there. Yeah. Here's anything else for recording. Hi, say hi. And you don't have to say hi. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I want to see if this pan works. And if it doesn't, this is our documentation. But so far, it's been working pretty well. Would be a problem if I... No. Yeah, I'd rather you didn't. Okay. You want your eggs on your hash browns? I do. <clears throat> so a little bit of work while we're here. So this is that this is what we're testing here. This is the Gotham fry pan. Now they had two sizes. They had the smaller fry pan and they have a larger pan for about eight more dollars. Use of use of um, use and care instructions are pretty standard. Uh, don't take it over 500 degrees. Wash it before you use it. It says lifetime warranty. The problem with a lifetime warranty is that's only good for the length life of the company. Sorry about this stupid shirt present from my grandkids. Okay, 
so the hash browns are done. Uh, Cynthia, I'm putting the eggs on. And you see so far our skillet's doing well. Let's take a temperature check. We are at 445, so that's way too hot for eggs. You want eggs between 300 and 350 degrees, so I'm going to let that cool a little bit. Um, my gut is just saying to put oil in these, but this is a test. I am going to put a little salt. Salt, add, salt adds some flavor, whereas usually I rely on the oil for flavor, but we're not doing that. So a little salt. Okay, we're down to 270 degrees. Our our oven coil is 820. That's why. Things heat up. Okay, so we're putting the egg on. So you can see we're in here in the pan. No oil. Egg seems like it's cooking just fine. Oh, I'm gonna put my bacon on the plates. Just in time, we'll see. It stuck a little bit. See right here, it's stuck. Well, you know what? It stuck, but it didn't like burn and stick. It just didn't slide as well as I would have liked it. But this is the first time I'm using this. So the next one will <clears throat> loosen a little bit with my spatula and see what happens. So yours is ready. Okay. Fairly clean. little salt. And we are up to 300, so I'm actually going to turn the burner off. Actually, we were up to 384. I don't know why I said 300, but anyway. Okay, so... <clears throat> eggs are the big thing, so... Here's, we have our eggs. Um, bacon, as you probably know, doesn't stick. <coughs> Hash browns do, but they didn't. I'm going to loosen this up. And actually, I'm going to try to flip it this way. Well, no. Got to do it this way. That's, that's who I am. Okay. So it didn't stick. Mine is finishing. I think I'm going to go mine on top as well. A little bit of Grandpa's Thunder Powder. Recipe available at www.grandpacooks.com. Just search for Thunder Powder. Or Grandpa's Ard Powder, which is really hot. Okay, and this is done. Dump it on the plate, and I'll show you what the pan looks like. And there you have it. So this is, um, I would call this, this experiment a success. So this is Robert Andrews, www.grandpacooks.com, saying thanks for watching.